check out the last video where I did the, the uh, jams on the car itself and uh, me and Paintcation have had a really good conversation in the comments look up Paintcation guys it's definitely gonna be worth your time I'll put a link down in the description but we were talking a lot about uh, ventilation in your DIY paint booth um, as well as considerations that you need to have when you're looking at your activators and re reducers as far as what temperature you use. So while we're on the topic of the Garage Gang, again, just wanted to thank all you guys. I love this community. I got people messaging me or commenting on the videos back and forth. It's really cool and I appreciate you guys. We do have our own little community here and it's awesome. But as always, as I like to do in a lot of different videos, I will share some tips and tricks with people. Um, and also some other channels that I watch that I've gained inspiration and knowledge from. So as far as spray paint specific type channels, you want to check out The Gunman. He's from uh, Australia or New Zealand or whatnot. If you guys know where he's from, let me know. But he has got a ton of great information on spray specific car painting. And uh, another good one is The Paint Society. That's a channel that uh, you'll want to check out and of course Sprayway Customs is a super great channel. He shows like the whole process with bodywork and everything but he's always got some really good shots of spray painting. And I definitely want to point out that you guys need to go check out the Underground Paint King, the People's Champ. So I bought my Spectrum paint gun and a long time ago I bought my 3M PPS cups system, the disposable cups and periodically I've tried to research the adapter that you need to attap, attach the cup to, to the Harbor Freight gun and um, it seems a little daunting and confusing to me as I've tried to read through it and I don't want to buy the wrong one uh, but I found the Underground Paint Kings video I will link that um, channel in the description as well as these others and you need to go see it because very clearly he got me dialed in on exactly what I needed and the part number to hook up my PPS to my gun. So thanks to all of those guys that help us out in our garage here with all those great videos. So go check them out. Well, spring has sprung and so has my time availability. It's been really busy here. But I got all my panels set up and keep on going with what I was doing on the fenders. We're just going to start out with probably that 180 grit Scratch her on down, get it down to about 320, scuff it up with the maroon, and call it good. But I didn't know, if anybody knows, maybe you got a car that hasn't been fully restored. Is there a seam sealer on the bottom of this part of the door shell? And I did all the way around the skins because I replaced the skins. But should I put some in here? And if I do, I, I don't think it would go all the way up here. On this other door, that's what I did. I just kind of smeared some in right here where it would be somewhat exterior and then this part would be interior. But I don't know. I'm curious what stock. Let me know in the comments if, if you have an idea on that. I think either way we're going to be fine. But I'm just going to keep on doing the grind. Or I should say 
doing the sand here and get the doors done and then just the uh, the um, inside edges of those bumpers and keep on driving towards that sealer and paint and clear. Okay, so we're working on the trunk lid here. I thought I'd give you some detail. So I'm basically taking the longest amount of time to break it down with 180. Again, it's it has a lot of orange peel in it, and that's from not really knowing my gun, what I was doing when I first started this eight years ago. So uh, sprayed out kind of rough. So get to know your gun, even if you got to practice, because it'll save you time. This 180 has taken me the longest to break it down just to where it's smooth. And then um, I'm using this block. So it's kind of soft. This is one of those bathtub chew toy things. And it acts like an interface pad for your fingers. So I wrap the 180 around here, hit it really good. And then I will take a piece of paper with 180 and I'll go around it by hand and get into the little grooves and things that that block's not going to reach. Okay, so then I switch out after it's all done and everything's been hit with 180, I switch to 320. Again, I'll wrap my block in 320, go all over it again, take the paper off, and then I'm reaching down in there with the 320 and getting the spots. And the whole time you're kind of watching for the difference in color. You'll see where it's shiny or not shiny. And then the last thing that I'm doing is going over the whole thing with red scotch bright, The whole entire thing. And as I'm going over it with red scotch bright, I'm using my air to blow all the dust out because that dust will hide a lot. And you get that dust out of the way, you can really see what you're working on. Um, again, this is just the underneath of the trunk. You'll never see this back here. I'm not making a concourse show car here so some of those spots just for the sake of time and effort you know I've just gone over them with the scuff on the with the orange scotch red scotch bright so it may not look like it on camera but these darker spots are actually scuffed up they're just not sanded smooth like some of the rest of it so that's a detailed look and description of what exactly I'm doing here now I'm only taking it to 320 and then the scotch brights like 400-ish um, be, because I'm going to seal this and I did a little sample test and when I use the sealer it seals up those scratches even more so and then I put my paint and my clear down and I couldn't see any scratches so on these interior jams that's as far as I'm going 320 with the red scotch bright the tech sheet recommends 500 to 800 for this paint. When I do the exterior, I'm certainly going to take it uh, probably to the 500 area. We'll see. I may do 400 with the gray Scotch Bright, which is um, you know even finer than four, 400 grit sandpaper. So that's what I'm doing. Got the doors, the door done, the trunk lid done, the fenders done, and now I need to finish up this door. I have no fingerprints left, but that's okay. I've got enough skin left to finish that up. Had a late night out here in Heavy Pedal Garage. I guess I put the pedal down to get this all done. We got everything sanded down using the process that I mentioned. We got the door pieces masked off. I didn't want a bunch of junk blowing out of there and we don't need paint on that anyways. Got the trunk prepped, ready to go. And then the bumpers, guys, I don't know here. I'm, I'm struggling to figure out what I want to do. You, you tell me what you think. Should I paint the jams of these bumpers, just the inside edges here, and put them back on the car, and then use the foam backmasking soft edge tape in the gaps 
when I paint the whole car, I would do the exterior surfaces. I've also got the lower valence that goes under the bumper and then the trunk filler panel that goes over the torsion rods to do as well. So I could do those jams with the bumpers all in one session, reassemble them on the car and then do that soft masking. Or would you scuff everything, reassemble the bumpers on the car, keep them loose, don't crank the bolts all the way down, let them hang out a little bit so that when I spray, I can get the base and clear up underneath in, um, to those areas. The same goes with the valence. The other thing I thought was to mount the valence and lay the deck filler panel, trunk filler panel out and just paint those at the same time but off the car. Just kind of lay them out maybe the way they would get mounted or with the valence maybe it doesn't matter since it's up under the car but that's like another option that I'm trying to consider so I got some time because I just decided not to do it let me know what you guys think so yeah heavy pedal garage this is a channel where you can see this firebird come back to life we're bringing this Phoenix back from the dead rising it up from the ashes so join me for the journey you'll get some tips and tricks along the way I'm just a guy out here in the garage doing this thing just like you guys. So thanks for stopping by Heavy Pedal Garage. Catch me next time and you'll get to see some paint actually laid down on these doors. Here's a sneak peek.